and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here in Vanilla FM and today we're going to take a look at the mid-season for 2035. Um, right, so quite a few things to look at. So if you've been following the uh, series so far, you'll know that this is the fourth fourth season. Yeah, fourth season we are now spending in the Sky Bet Championship uh, with the hopes of getting promoted this season actually. We went to the playoffs last season, we ended up losing in the first playoff or in the second play no, the second playoff, so the final. Uh, so we ended up having to um, play one more season in this uh, at this level and uh, it's panning out very similar to last season except it's a lot more consistent. So we've been in the playoff zone this whole time from the start of the season up to now. The lowest we've been was seven, so we just dipped out of the playoff seat, uh, zone uh, just one week straight back up. And we've never gone above third. Oh yeah, we did. You Momentarily, just for one week, we've been to second. Now we are evenly distributed, and by that I mean we are uh, nine or eight points away from being dropped from the from the lowest um, uh, place of the playoff zones. Words are hard. Uh, and then we're also eight points away from second place. So we we are equally as likely to get the second place uh, or to get um, dropped off the playoff zone. I am hoping that we will never drop below the playoff zone. Um, but I'm not entirely sure we'll be able to reach second place because West Ham and Southampton are looking very, very good this year. Now, a few things. So uh, we have been through the January review. This is usually when we make a few more transfers and tidy up the squad a little bit. Uh, particularly this season, I've been looking to offload some under 23s for some money wasn't very successful with it but we did make our biggest transfer ever um our, our biggest outgoing transfer ever so let's take a look at the transfers first of all and you will see there's uh two change two incoming changes and a few outgoing changes so let's start with the incoming changes so the one of the changes that i did was to the halfback position we were very weak in that area. We're also weak in the box-to-box -box position, but I haven't managed to make any changes there. Now, in the halfback position, we had Alan Jaidhine, who was still young, um, but I found someone slightly better than him, and therefore we loaned Alan Jaidhine out, and we have replaced him with Harry Wood. Uh, a lot more experienced player. He can also play decently at central defender not that we really need that however we've had a couple of issues with injuries as we'll come on to in a second so that's our uh, our biggest sort of player that's come in uh, not on the transfer he came on loan from Sheffield United um, United I think um, Stefan Ward is has been a necessary loan because um, we needed a backup goalkeeper. Now, if I show you the transfers, it'll make more sense. Let me pull up the notes on the side. So we've made the change with Alan Jardine. Here, we sent him out on loan and we got Harry Wood for that position, just to strengthen that position a little bit. Uh, now, the reason we got Stefan Duarte is because Duncan Wright has been on injury this whole time. He, he, uh, no, that's the wrong person. Where is he? There we go, he's coming back. I can't find him. Oh, of course. I'll uh, put him back in the under 23s. Okay, yep, there we go. Duncan Wright. He's still injured, and he's still potentially injured for another three months. But he's been injured for ages. Um, basically, he got injured right at the start of the season. Um, and therefore we've not had a backup goalkeeper for that whole time. In the meantime, Tom Yates also picked up an injury at one point for like uh, three weeks, I think. Therefore we had to play with one of our youth goalkeepers. Not good. Quite a desperate thing. 
So we brought in Stefan Duarte just to uh, cover us. So that's why Duncan Wright, at the meantime, is being dropped down to the end of 23s. He'll probably be back next season if um, if we still require him, which we probably will. Yeah, but no other changes other than that. Still the same squad. It's They are gelling very well. And they know each other very well now because we haven't made massive changes for a long time now. Excuse me. So yeah, very good. To look at the home screen, we'll see that Miles, our main striker, has uh, 10 goals at, this, uh, at the moment. However, when I say main striker, actually he has been sharing, like him and Tim uh, Graham has been pretty much sharing all of the matches. We've got really good uh, goal count for a lot of our players. So Miles Shiny with 10 goals, Timmy Graham the other striker with 8 goals. Then we've got the Shadow Strikers also doing bits. So we've got uh, Zach with 7 goals and Finley. Finley hasn't scored that many. He did last year, but not this year. Maybe he's on the week, he's way out. Um, then we've got the left uh, wingers with 6 and 5 goals each. Dodds with 8 assists. Uh, and then the right wingers, Declan Wright and um, Danny Bates. With not as many as many goals, but pretty good. Pretty good di distribution here with um, a lot of players getting on the score sh sheet. But not as much as maybe other teams. So whilst our goals are very much distributed, we're not scoring as many as I hope, I think. I, th I, would, I would hope they would have a lot more goals than this. But it's still pretty good. Just to have a quick look at the rest of the transfers then. Then the rest of them were outgoing transfers. I offloaded a few of the under-23s players. So Hogan Gamble out for 40k. Just because we didn't need him and he had no prospects at the club. Uh, one person who did have some prospects potentially was Emmanuel Ezzi. We did sell him for nearly a million. He was our biggest outgoing transfer ever. So I wish him all the, all the best. We weren't able to get any more than 1900. We tried to get a million, but no one was biting, so we had to lower it a little bit. But he's pretty good, doing really well. So wish him all the best. Gareth Batch as well, we didn't need him, and uh, therefore we sold him. Not, not very much. Um, Peter Simons, again, another striker we didn't need for the future. And finally, I have mentioned uh, Jake. Also offloaded him, we didn't need him for the future. So it's about slimming down the wage budget, also making some room in the end of 23s. Um, and trying to make a little bit of cash. We actually made 1 million profit in the month of January through both uh, transfers, but also we got some FA Cup prizes. We still have not been knocked out of the FA Cup. We're going to play the fifth round against Norwich. We managed to pull out a win against Leeds somehow. And for the third round, we won against Crawley. For the Carabao Cup, we in eventually got knocked out uh, on the fourth round by Manchester United. 5-0. It was a bit heavy defeat. But yeah, the rest of the season has been going really well. We haven't actually lost for the championship for a while. Oh, actually, we lost against Crew recently. But before that, <laughs> before that, we hadn't lost since October. So we're doing pretty well. Uh, any other changes? I don't think so. We still... Expanding the stadium, the youth facilities have been upgraded now. So we now have uh, great, uh, no, sorry, that's training, average youth facilities. I still don't have youth leagues, even though we're category three, but I still don't understand how that works really. Maybe it's some sort of bug, I don't know. And I've recently asked the board to look for a new senior affiliate just because to see if there's anything that's out there. I doubt it, but we'll see what they come back with. Uh, in the meantime, the prediction for our youth candidates is that they will be a terrific uh, group, potential real gold generation. We'll see. So hopefully some lovely players there. Right, I apologize for, for sniffing. I've just recently moved back to my um, uh, work accommodation, not really work accommodation, where I live when I'm at work. And... Uh, uh, for some reason, hay fever and stuff 
around this area is a bit worse. Right, so. Um, let's go right into it. I've already selected the team and the tactics and all of that jazz. So we're going to play early crosses. Uh, nothing different here. And nothing much different there. Also, I should mention that we've improved our staff as well in the meantime throughout the uh, first half of the season. And we're looking pretty good. We've got a lot of coaches. Our training is looking good as well. With, you know, pretty good ratings throughout and light workloads for the most part. I'm currently working as well on improving the under-23s uh, staff as well. Where's the training? We have coaches. In a very similar scenario, and if we looked at the under 18s, we'll find a very similar scenario as well. Okay, so let's go into a match playing Rother Rotherham, who are currently laying 17th. Now I'm, I'm, ta I'm taking a risk playing attacking. Um, I'm not sure if I should take that risk, but we will try it. Let's make this full screen again. Yeah, so, so obviously a few changes will come up at the end of the season. We'll move back into our new expanded stadium. Uh, more capacity, 12,000. We haven't really been getting much more than 10,000, so I think that that capacity will be good for us for a while. If we get promoted to the Premiership, that might attract more, uh, more fans to the stadium. But for the moment, in our this current stadium that we have... Um, we're playing at Bristol, which I think has 25,000 capacity, and we're at the moment doing like 10,000, um, 10,500 around that that mark. So I don't think we'll need any anything bigger than 12,000 for the time being. Now we're playing a few uh, players from youth because of injuries, so Arrowsmith Arrow is one of them. He's replacing our uh, inside forwards on the right who are both injured. Oh, that could have been a good assist from Arrowsmith. It's nice that we have the ability to bring in those youth players often, because uh, obviously I only keep 22 players in the main squad, so if there's an injury uh, or a suspension cut, coinciding between both players for that position, then I go down to the under-23s and under-18s to see if there are any players there that can fill in for us. And it gives them a chance to play as well. And gain some experience. Now, Albert it was, what, it was, it was our biggest transfer, if you remember from last episode. 4.6 million? 4.4 million? I can't remember. I think it was 4.6. It hasn't lived up to the expectation at all. Maybe he's just settling into the club. Um, we'll see. Next season will be, I guess, the proper test. Because the pressure of the transfer value, I suppose, uh, will be... Um, will disappear like the, the pressure of it. I can't take Brad Hills out. So I suppose we'll we'll judge it by next season if he stays around. Um, okay, I'm out. So it looks like we've maybe have played have played it too risky with going attacking, but it's okay. It's not panning out all, all that well for us. Now Tom Yates is done again very well for us this season. He has been injured uh, f only for a short amount of time, but um, yeah, other than that, pretty good for us. It's not his fault that we are losing 2-0 today. It's, uh, it's my fault for choosing slightly too risky a tactic. And, um, and now I'm just going to let it play out because what is the point? We'll jump into another match. 
just after this one just to see i'll play it a little bit a little bit more safe for that one i think and uh and we'll see what the difference is i'm not actually sure who we're playing against uh, i might need to have a look at that oh come on Aaron smith and a 23 is legend come on So that's Dodds setting him up. Whoops, a few things there, and into the goal. Hey, but at least Ira Smith got a goal, right? That's good. Okay, so that's a loss for that one. So that this is two two losses in a row now. Crew, we lost against Crew and lost against Rotherham. Let's try not, not to make it three in a row, sh sh shall we? Right, West. Uh, West Brom, we're playing. West Brom, well, currently 10th. As you can see, the, tech, the training has been focusing a lot on attacking. I'm essentially trying to improve our finishing um, average rating. Also, another thing, um, as I'm clicking away, I just remembered that we have massively improved our scouting. We can now scout worldwide and we have quite a few scouts so we can cover all of the areas all of the continents, uh, I suppose, and then a few of the regions as well. I think we're doing all of the continents and four regions or three regions, something along that. So pretty good knowledge that's starting to build. Now, of course, um, by doing that, we obviously we'll have uh, foreign players and we need to take into account when we're recruiting from their uh, visas and all that kind of stuff. Right, for the next match, Tom Yates and here we're going to stick with Richard South for now. We've got our double here, never really changes that much, Brad Hills and she, uh, Scott, I think his name is this, yeah, Scott. Uh, Olivia, that's fine. Now here, Harry Wood is injured, unfortunately, so we'll keep Neil. This guy started, so let's put Mike Davis in. Okay, these guys have come back from injury. Danny Bates. Mm -mm -mm. Let's keep Zach. We give Dodds a rest, bring in Cray, and let's give Timmy a rest and bring in Miles. Checking the... Uh, bench. I need some sort of halfback, halfback player. So let's see. Let's see what the halfbacks that we have at the, in the youth. Uh, let's see. So Lee Harvey. Yeah. All right. Let's put Lee Harvey in. Um, okay. So we got all the positions covered. I think. Declan Wright rather than Daniel Smith, because Daniel Smith is from the youth. So let's have a main squad player in that position. So we've got goalkeeper, right, left, center, halfbacks, box to box, two sides. Uh, we need someone who can play Shadow Striker. How about the Shadow Striker? There we go. And I think that's it. Okie dokie. Now let's let's see look at uh, see what the Tactical advice says we have someone new again. They, should, they say we should play positive rather than attacking. That sounds good to me. Let's try that. Focus down the middle. Push higher. Don't tackle harder. Let's remove that so they're going to attack normally, I suppose. Uh, need to put this back to positive. So there, we're focusing down the middle. And we are being a bit more... Uh, 
liberal with our defense. Okie dokie, let's go into it. Let me just make sure I didn't make no tired players in the main squad. No, good. Okay, so this is the, st the stadium we normally play in. This is the Bristol City Stadium. And as you can see, it's nowhere near full. So I think the 12,000 seat stadium will be just fine for us. We were maxing out the 8,000 constantly. So it's good that we're upgrading to 12,000, but I think the 12,000 will be good for next season. We won't max it out too much, I don't think. All right, not very eventful so far. Craig Noon with a poor pass. Come on, guys. Better passing. Need to do quite a lot better than that. Craig Noon is going for a dribble. Off he goes. Is he going to cross? He's going to cross. And, oh, gosh. Bates was flying in, wasn't he? Looping up to the right. Oh. Not as far as that, though. Nice defense. Well done, Tom Yates. I thought that nearly went in, but obviously didn't. Okay, so it's the half time. Let's do a few changes. Um, let's give this guy some minutes as well. Like I said, they've both just come back from injury. So they need a little bit of... Um, like sharpness, I suppose. Match fitness, I think, is the correct phrase. Poor passing. It's just poor passing, I think. Some matches they seem to like land every pass perfectly, but this match did a little bit all over the place. Craig Noon with a goal. Declan Wright with the assist. Very good. Off the bench and starts assisting. Nice. Let's um, do some off changes. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see who's tired. This guy's tired. Don't really have anyone. Oh, Lee Harvey. Let's give the young kid some minutes. Now I've got... Uh, let's get Richard South out. Everyone else can stay in. Pretty good free kick, but he hit the post. Ah, oh, what a shame. Nobody oh, needs to see that again. <laughs> All right, we've got corner kick and no danger at all for the opposition no I think Lee Harvey already scored two goals for us this season I seem to remember that I'm not sure if that's a true statistic well, let's have a look just quickly uh, if we go to under 23s where's Lee Harvey there he is Skybet, oh no, two assists, not two goals. Okay. So 
So maybe you could do one more assist here. Come on. But he's not playing well enough, I don't think. It looks like it's my, this is going to be a draw. Let's see what Norwich... Uh, not Norwich, sorry. Uh, West Brom. Let's see what West Brom do here. They've got colours very similar to Norwich, don't they? Okay, it's a draw. Obviously, we need to pick ourselves back up because we are we used to win a lot more. And we haven't won in a while. Let's look at the schedule. So we start off really well. Really strong with a win, a draw, a win, etc. And now recently we've had two, two losses in a draw. So not looking great. We're still in third position. But we're now quite a lot further away from second. Quite a lot closer. Well, actually, not that much closer. Seven points away from sixth. And that is all that I'm going to be able to show you today. Sorry about that. Uh, that's all I'm going to be able to show you today because uh, our time is running out. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, if you've enjoyed the episode, leave it a like, and you can also follow the series as a playlist. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can get no notified when new episodes come out. And you can also check out the Patreon if you want to check any behind the scenes or spoilers. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.